my mother was not connecting to the music i made as peter cat so i was just not comfortable with that disconnection um, between me and her i'm not a, exactly a religious or spiritual person but i think in my music i find something spiritual i don't i don't connect it to a musical genre like rap or dance if you feel it most of the other time the other person will feel it the art of recording is a quickly is a dying art like recording a band live recording instruments live is i would say on the down low would you be able to define your music because we have i mean i have personally tried to probably understand but i see a lot of different influences in your music as lifafa uh, so how do you look at that i that's a really hard question for me to also really i think i i instead of sort of describing the music itself i i've i've realized there are some aspects of myself which come out in my music which is i'm not a, exactly a religious or spiritual person but i think in my music i find something spiritual uh and and um, there's the other i don't know i just it's it's a for me it's almost like therapy uh it's it's my private sort of therapy session and i try to make money off of it but it's essentially that it's the sort of spiritually asking myself questions uh i don't really interact a lot with you know a lot of humanity in general there are some particular groups and trends and family i like interact with so um uh, all the experiences i have in my life happen a lot internally a lot of the dialogue i have so my music is sort of an expression of that internal dialogue uh which i have a lot of about doubts a lot of like love i feel sometimes just gratitude sometimes being aware of like where i am and appreciating that or not appreciating that or hating on it um uh, so it's it's just it's just that it's a sort of expression of my own internal dialogue and sometimes it's spiritual sometimes it's dancey but i don't i don't connect it to a musical genre like rap or dance or you know i just because i i i don't i don't constrain the music to any genre it's uh, the subject of the music or the song is uh, is the key for me basically so <laughs> when you when you say that it's it's basically your expression of what you're feeling inside that kind of comes out through your through your music um Are you ever kind of worried that will it connect with the audience that I have? Is that something that is there on your mind? Because something that you will feel, I might not feel that. <clears throat> yeah, so I think that's a very particular art, uh, and I think the one thing which resonates a, uh, between a creator and a listener or somebody who is consuming that art is a sincerity. Um, so I think when I sincerely feel something in a in a piece of music, so for example. I only finish a piece of music uh, or really continue working on something if I've had a sort of an authentic moment in it. I always I st- I mean I've started hundreds of songs uh, but th- there are only a few songs where I remember I had a moment when it was being created or worked on and that was an a- authentic moment. So once you've had that moment the rest of the process is really to sort of figure out how are you going to recreate that moment accurately for anybody else. uh most importantly yourself because if you feel it most of the other time the other person will feel it uh you know that's why i mean that's why when we all ha- share so much culture in common you know like stories some stories hit all of us um some movies the whole world was watching game of thrones and you know let's say the red wedding happened and everybody was like oh my god so obviously that is a way of you know sort of connecting everyone across language culture and i think the way to do that is sort of finding this authentic way of expressing that emotion um if we if we look at your trajectory of recorded music <laughs> you have a lot of streams coming in from uh, outside india in peter cat yeah yeah in in, in peter cat <laughs> so is that one of the reasons why you wanted to get your indian audience rallying with you or or something that you wanted to kind of um make a mark that okay it's my music or me as as a person i i'm just not making music for uh, people outside the country but i can make music for my people as well yes that that was also really i i guess it was even more basic than that because basically i realized my mother was not connecting to the music i made as peter cat um and in my life i basically have just my mother as my family um so i was just not comfortable with that disconnection um between me and her and so i decided that that also sort of you know uh motivated me to start making something 
she would understand and she could connect with and understand what her son was doing <coughs> with his time and his life. Um, and yeah, it, it's like like you said, there was a sense of, um, even though it's always changing, you know, sometimes I'm like, this place. And then sometimes I'm like, I love these people, these are mine. So it's always like going between this and in that moment of like love and adoration from like appreciation for your own people. Something you really experience when you come from outside India after a long time. Uh, you know, and I spent a few years, two, three years outside India and when I came back, I felt this, I felt that again. And in that sort of the heat of that sort of uh, romantic idea of what India is, till it hits you back, I was like, yes, I must do something for this place. I, uh, I want to give what I can and hopefully it will help people here. Because they deserve it, I deserve it, everybody deserves it as much as anywhere else, you know. Right. Angrezo ko tata chalta rehta hai, hello. Do you think somehow we have over romanticized Indian music and kind of alienated a huge generation of people who could probably fall, fall in love with that music? I don't, I don't quite understand. You in terms of say for example <laughs> Indian classical music or probably folk music or even the fact that my dad keeps on telling me that the music of the 60s was the best. <laughs> You know, the fact that I get to hear that, I'm like, okay, no, I, I will show him that, you know, there's, there's better music around. But he will never get this music. Yeah. The fact that, you know, there's, there's a romantic, like, for example, I'll, I'll give you an, a proper example of how it is. So, um, I met this man called Kweme Sereba in, um, in Norway. He's a migrant from Ivory Coast. So, when he moved, he's a musician and his entire family is, a music, uh, of, is of musicians. He moved to the uh, Norway. And he started making music in his own Ivory Coast language and the French music. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It was not really because he was from the outskirts, so it was French mostly, but they still had their um, dialects. Yeah. So they, they started doing that, but they could never connect with the audience in, in, in Norway. So his entire life's motive was to basically change the exotic nature of music because once it's exotic it is secluded correct you know only few people can get to that only few people will understand you it takes years for you to uh, you know kind of understand that music <coughs> no it's not it's just music yeah and it's it's the same thing that you're hearing i mean yeah. if you like the music you like the music yeah is it something that a bubble rap kind of we've done it for quite a long time i think it's different for all the different pockets of music. So, you know, I think at least folk music in India, a lot of it is remade in Bollywood films. I think Grandma Aryaman did a lot. Sneha uh, Kanvelgar also did Sneha a lot. Chathampu, yes. She also did that really nicely in Gangs of Oz. You know, there is a, that is, that, those were really, I think the word is tasteful for me, like tasteful ways of bringing it back in a way that anybody of any generation could appreciate it. Um, and I guess if you're if you're asking me like is Indian classical music exoticized to the West it's exoticized obviously, mm -hmm. but in the same way a lot of the Western music is also exoticized for Indians you know but if as I I guess both of us are people who have experienced walking between both both worlds so it sort of sucks when you're in the West and they're like I love Ravi Shankar and it's like the only sitar and tabla is the only idea of but at the same time. Indian simultaneously, Indians themselves are guilty of losing touch with that music uh, and romantic, not romanticizing it, just sort of refusing to move it ahead. Also, I mean, there's all this other shit, no? Like, these are, they were stuck to gharanas, so there was no, like, uh, there was no way of bringing it out so people to experiment. Like, there's hardly any experimentation in Indian classical music. I mean, maybe, like, it, the whole point of Indian classical music is to experiment, so it reached this impasse where uh, it was unable to like move beyond its own like you know academic ideas uh, that's another like topic but basically I, I i i'm trying to understand what you said but i think in a sense the reason a lot of our parents and a lot of people say oh i love the music of 60s 70s because i think the music then was driven by different ideas of music so you know there's always been this battle between melody and rhythm uh, which continues. It's there's a dance between them, all right, throughout history. So let's say in the past, in the distant past, rhythm ruled, all right. It was the simplest thing to do uh, as a community, as a society. Everyone's got drums. Everyone's going ta 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 ta. Sab beat banare. 
then melody took a long time because it required more complex instruments uh, you know uh, like slowly like you developed whatever some vibe vibraphone kind of thing imagine how complicated an instrument like a cello or a, a piano is right uh, it's such a crazy complicated so eventually you saw rhythm give way to melody uh, now you have hundreds of years like western classical music indian classical music all starting to work on melody rag likh rahe hain ye likh rahe hain beats ka time chal raha hai and i would say up till the 60s and 70s melody had a profound uh, power over beat but as drums started appearing in the late 1800s and early 1900s rhythm was coming back with the invention of like a one man drum kit you know like that didn't happen before every there used to be one separate guy this abhi bhi indian shaadis mein hota hai so what we had is what we have now is a back uh, we have moved back to rhythm as the backbone of what we call music which is why like the drums are the loudest thing in every piece of music you heard so i think anybody who enjoyed listening to lyrics and the voice and the melody will not be happy what hip hop represents because hip hop is profoundly a marriage of rhythm and lyrics and melody to a lesser degree right uh, and i think that's it so it's either sort of you appre- it's just depends on what kind of person you are and what you appreciate and it's very hard for somebody who appreciated melody and really enjoys singing to appreciate what's happening now in music when what's happening now in music is equally interesting but it just doesn't come in that same realm so you know there are still amazing singers out there but singing is not as central to the motivation of music it's rhythm now uh and that's really it so the exoticization is more not really what's happening it's more like we are in a wave uh and right now we are in a wave of where rhythm is ruling the thing and as time passes people will want to go back to melody and we'll experience that again in some stage because you spoke about uh, a bit about electronic music um why is it that or, or according to you why is it that um people associate electronic music with <laughs> dance music whereas it's a completely different i mean it's just a part of it dance music is a part of electronic music yeah why do you think that that happens man i think a lot of just so happened because a lot of dance music Uh, a lot of electronic music was only heard in bars and clubs and pubs um, initially i think and i mean there still is and that's the right atmosphere to hear it in at a certain volume with a certain set of speakers so what do you you know what that's what happens i mean you know that's what happens when the audiences go into a place they drink they do their drugs or whatever they want to do and they listen to their music that becomes the the environment for their music you know every every music has in its environment um the correct environment and the temple of da- the temple of electronic music is initially i would say and still is very much a club um and in a way people are not entirely wrong um you know electronic music did start as dance music and still is a majority dance music so they're not wrong it's only recently that electronic music has started shifting into the realm of like mixing singing and writing uh, songs and stuff and i think that has a lot to do with technology and some artists always make it you know suddenly like bring it out like i say there's a, there's a guy called james blake or burial there are a lot of people who started like figuring it out in their own ways because they were like because in their environment everybody was listening to dance music but they were not from that sort of world so they wanted to integrate their own singing and own songwriting into it so eventually it transforms and now i'd say almost all music is electronic music uh uh i think 70 to 80% of music you listen to on a radio or spotify is made electronically the the art of recording is a quickly is a dying art like recording a band live recording instruments live is i would say on the down low um and i can say that as a band because even as a band now so much is done in an electronic fashion so i think it's just it's a matter of time but yeah i think they're not wrong <laughs> a lot of electronic music was Yeah. You know there's a lot of reasons for that it's like, it's always like this sort of weird side there are always logical reasons for this it's just an electronic kick drum is one of the cleanest sounds you can make you know and a acoustic kick drum doesn't have that impact yeah. so when when people started messing with drum machines and like boom 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 it was such a precise beautiful bass sound yeah you wanted to like blast it so it became dance music and it very much is no like uh, ultimately like हर म्यूजिक सीन का उसके साथ कोई नशा कनेक्ट हो जाता है वेदर इट वॉज आई गेस इट वॉज विद साइकोडेलिक म्यूजिक वॉज एस इन वीड सम म्यूजिक इज अ स्ट्रेट अप दारू लाइक ओल्ड जैज वॉज लाइक क्या गा नहीं कर रहे थे लोग एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डांस म्यूजिक इज इन टू ऑल दीज
So it's always there's a marriage of the nasha which you're which people want to do. A lot of people, not everyone, but the people who really take it seriously, they always connect it to that. And like I said, the temple of electronic music is the is the club. So until that changes, you will always associate it with the because I mean club में तो dance ही करोगे, बैठ के चाय तो नहीं पीना